Hello, it's Jake. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. I thought it'd be interesting to compare two views on financial goals. In particular, I wanted to compare the traditional view of what your financial goals in life should be with uh, my approach, which is completely does not fit the traditional view. And so this is going to be a massive self-justification. But I hope that there um, there is useful stuff in what I'm going to talk about, because what I'm interested in is financial freedom. And I think it's um, a fantastic goal to have. So I'd like to explain what the goal of financial freedom is and how it differs from traditional financial goals. So let me see if this sounds familiar to you, because these are the financial goals that I was um, aware of around me in the culture, in my family, in the media and so forth when I was growing up. So the traditionally the goal, financial goal is to achieve material wealth and comfort. And the method for doing that is you have to go out and get a good job, a nice, secure, good job. And how do you measure how you're doing? Well, you measure that in your salary. Um, your salary should be at a certain level and then your family and friends and everybody has expectations of what you should be earning when you're 20, when you're 30, when you're 40 and so forth. And that's how you measure how you're doing. And then what should you do with your salary? Well, um, first off, as soon as possible, what you want to do is buy a house. Um, you want to take out a mortgage and buy a house. Uh, why do you do that? Well, because paying rent is for suckers, because that's just money down the drain. Whereas when you buy a house, then every month, instead of paying rent, you're paying into your own property. And look at that. At the end of the day, you pay off your mortgage, you own the house, um, and it's all yours. And that's part of your, your wealth. So that's what you do. You get a mortgage. Um, mortgage is very important. Now, what about debts? So you've got your mortgage, but what about other kinds of debt? Well, you can use credit cards and higher purchase agreements and loans sensibly to extend you know, your material possessions. So for example, you might need a new car, you might need a loan for that, or you might need to buy some home TV or equipment. And you can use loans to uh, obtain those nice material goods now and pay them off over a, um, a fixed period of time and so forth. So that, that's a sensible use of loans in the traditional view. But what you want to avoid in the traditional view is any kind of crazy loans for harebrained schemes. You've got to be very careful about what you take loans out for. They're okay for sensible things to improve your home and your car and so forth, but not for harebrained schemes. And how do you make provision for the future? Well, what you do is you take out a pension and you pay into that pension regularly. And there you go. In when you retire, you have um, fixed income from your pension and you own your house and everything's hunky dory. That's the traditional view of what your financial goals should be. And that just didn't work out for me. Um, I, uh, I haven't done any of that. Maybe it's partly because I have seen how badly wrong that can go. Um, I, my parents got into uh, negative equity um, in the housing crash um, of the late 80s, early 90s. And I saw that. It made a big impression on me at the time. Uh, maybe it's because I also saw uh, my parents working steady jobs that... Uh, didn't seem to get them anywhere. And I think there's been a number of other things that have influenced me. But I don't, this wasn't necessarily a, a conscious plan of mine in the beginning, but looking back now, I can see where I was trying to get to. And I think also I was very influenced by the um, 1990s boom in entrepreneurship, which was um, an amazing time for young people to be involved in entrepreneurship with the internet. Um, it was possible for people in their 20s to to really achieve um, 
significant changes in their financial circumstances by the strength of their intelligence and their ability to uh, bullshit others. I mean, to come up with amazing internet businesses. No, seriously, there were some, there was a, a time of significant opportunity, even though there were some really ridiculous businesses around at the time that somehow got investment. Oh my God, what were they thinking? Oh, well, anyway. So how does financial freedom as a goal uh, compare to the traditional view? Well, firstly, whereas traditionally the goal is material wealth or comfort, the goal that I would like to suggest is financial freedom. And we'll come on to um, a more precise definition of that in a moment. What is the method? Well, rather than the method being having a secure job, I think that the the real the main method has to be entrepreneurship, um, creating value uh, yourself. I mean, you can certainly do a lot to improve your financial freedom when you're in employment, when you're working for somebody else. But I think it should be clear um, in terms of the benefits of entrepreneurship relative to paid employment, both in terms of the tax benefits and in terms of the potential to you know, create value in a business that you own and you therefore have either a revenue generating um, asset, your business that, that can give you potentially passive income, or you have um, a business that you can then sell and uh, get financial gain that way. So I, I think that comparison hopefully um, is something that we don't need to go into that much more detail about. And what is the measure of financial freedom? Well, whereas the measure of uh, material, the measure of success in traditional financial goals is salary, the measure of financial freedom, I would like to suggest, is the length of time until you have to work again. So basically, if you stopped working now, how long before you would have to work again, given your current level of expenditure? In other words, your passive income minus your expenses has to be greater than zero. And depending on your setup, that can either last you for a couple of months, couple of years, 10 years, 20 years, or indefinitely. That's what financial freedom is. It's the ability to live without working, either for a certain amount of time or indefinitely. So what about this idea about owning your own home, mortgages and debt? So the traditional idea was as soon as you can, get a mortgage and start paying that off. And you use credit cards and other kinds of debt to get all kinds of material benefits now from buying things, the consumption items, like stuff for the home and a car and so forth. But be careful about debts for other things. And I would like to say, suggest that that, you've, that could be flipped on its head and it's really quite the opposite way around. Um, I would like to suggest for the purposes of financial freedom, a mortgage is the last thing that you want. And if you are going to take on any debt, which I do agree is a, a very risky and dangerous thing to do and be very careful about it. But if you are going to take on debt, I think that should only be for entrepreneurship, for value generation, because the idea of that is to use debt at a specific time to help you get closer to your goal of financial freedom. I say that because I, I have taken on debt in my life. Um, I've never had a mortgage. And I've never used credit cards to buy um, consumption goods or taken out loans for things like buying a car. In fact, I've, I've never even owned a car. But um, in my business, I took on a very significant personal debt. I was personally um, and jointly liable with my business partner for a loan, which when we paid it off with interest, ended up being £150,000. Um, to basically to grow the business. That's what we use that money for. So that, that loan helped me in the goal that I had of growing the business, um, which ultimately um, I sold, which helped me towards my goal of financial freedom. Now, as I said, that was a risk. Um, it was a 
I would like to say, more calculated risk than it really was, because at the time I was flying by the seat of my pants quite a lot. Um, but actually, it, it did pay off. And so I'm not going to say you should never use debt, because personally, I did use debt at one stage in my career. But I will suggest that um, if you're going to take on debt, at least take it on for, for something useful like entrepreneurship, um, as opposed to something that's purely a consumption item, like um, buying a house. And the last thing um, in comparison to traditional uh, financial goals is this idea of future provision through a pension. So whereas traditionally, how do you provide for the future? Well, you, t you have a pension. Um, I think the goal of financial freedom, how do you provide for the future? The answer to that is through passive income. That's the real goal. Income that you can get without having to work, and that can be from a number of things. It could be, for an example, um, from different types of investment that pay interest. It could be from owning property that, that as investment property that pays rent and so forth. But I, I didn't have um, a pension until I was in my mid thirties, and then I only took one out because I was working for the company that I sold my business to. Um, and just made sense in tax terms for me to to have a pension. Um, but it hasn't been my strategy for providing for the future. So I hope that makes sense. And, you know, even if um, this is just a massive roundabout justification for me having not um, taken uh, the advice that uh, that is floating around out there about what to do financially, um, I think it's worked out pretty well for me, and I, I highly recommend you at least to consider what your financial goals are and to look critically upon both the traditional uh, goals and the goal of financial freedom in the way that I've described it and, and have a think about it. And I will just also say that in terms of comparing the traditional way and way of financial freedom is that financial freedom doesn't necessarily mean having a huge amount of wealth. In fact, People who have huge wealth, but also huge expenses, are not free at all because they have to work. I mean, then all that's happened there is that they have more at stake. They have got such high outgoings that if, if they lose their highly paid job, they are in deep trouble. And I mean, that is really stressful. So you can aim for financial freedom at a relatively low level of material wealth as long as your outgoings as long as your expenses are low enough so that you have the ability to um to do what you want without having to work so in other words if your passive income minus your expenses is greater than zero the passive income and the expenses can both be very low numbers or very high numbers it doesn't matter but as long as passive income minus expenses is greater than zero and as long as that is such that you will be able to continue for hopefully as long as possible, then you're fine. The other thing to say about this way of measuring financial freedom is that if you do want to start a business, then thinking in these terms is the right way to go because you're going to need to be able to support yourself for some time um, when you do start that business. You're going to need a certain amount of savings um, in order to um, to do uh, to start a business, um, how much you need is is, is um, a matter of debate. Personally, I think you should have, I think you should be able to think that, or oh, I could probably just about scrape by for between, let's say, between six and twelve months, because that way you've got enough to give you some room to develop your business and test it out, find clients, and so forth. So let me just summarize this one more time. The goal is financial freedom, not necessarily a certain level of material comfort or, or whatever. The method is entrepreneurship, not having a secure job. The measure is the time until you have to work again. How long can you go without working at your current uh, level of expenses. And to do that, your passive income minus expenses has to be greater than zero. So it doesn't matter how much um, your income is. What matters 
in terms of financial freedom is whether or not you can sustain your current lifestyle without working. Whether that's a high or a low level of income is up to you. Debt, whilst, whilst it's dangerous and has to be used carefully, is something that if you're going to use, is best used for entrepreneurship, for value generation to get you closer towards financial freedom. Debt for consumption items, like buying a house, is not going to help you uh, in terms of financial freedom. That's not to say you shouldn't do it if you want to do it. It's just not going to necessarily help you get where you want to go in terms of financial freedom. And providing for the future is through passive income. That's what to focus on. You might use um, the facility of a pension purely for tax purposes um, at certain points in your life if you have to work for other people, as, as I did. But the main thing to focus on is how do you get to having um, passive income? The goal's freedom, the method's entrepreneurship, the measure is the time until you have to work again with your passive income minus expenses being greater than zero. Debt is used for entrepreneurship or value generation and a provision for the future is through passive income. So I hope this is helpful. I would love to hear any feedback or thoughts that you have about this and thank you so much for listening.